Welcome along to another how-to video for doing things on your BMW E39 M5. Today's video we're going to be looking at the rear subframe bushes. Recently I've done a complete suspension overhaul on the M5 which included all new rear arms, bushings, ball joints up front thrust arms and a very various amount of poly bushing as well using power flex items. When I refitted the subframe at the rear and took the vehicle out for a drive after doing the alignment which can be seen in another video, all of the work pretty much cured the severe axle tramp I was getting when making a sprinted start. A slight bit of axle tramp remained and after investigation I've found that the rear subframe bushings even though they are brand new allow for a slight bit of play which causes axle tramp. Now to combat this Powerflex do a kit and it'll set you back around about £100 depending on where you're buying from and essentially all they are is inserts which go into where the subframe bush voids are. So there's two different types. There's a set for the front of a subframe and a set for the rear of a subframe. Now you might be thinking, well, why have we got two different types, front and rear? Is it really that diff is it really that different? Yes we are. Because when the front of a subframe you have these particular ones and at the rear you have these particular ones which look completely different for the bottom mounting parts. The top, top parts are identical. When you accelerate the twisting motion on the subframe forces the rear of the subframe downwards and the front of the subframe upwards and this is where you get your axle tramp as the front of a subframe goes up inside the bush and hits on the bush mounting on the chassis. Now on the E39 M5 and also on the E39 530 diesel there are little rubber pads which go on the front of the forward subframe bush which sits between the bush and the chassis. That's all good and well but they do wear and split through and that is common cause for the axle tramp as well as this rubber pad's diminished it allows the subframe to touch the chassis. So the poly bushes replace that on the front so this is for the front of the subframe so this item goes in on top this one goes in underneath, or vice versa. And that, thing, that one goes in on top. It replaces the rubber bushing, and this goes up underneath, and it fills the voids in the bushing to stop any lateral movement. The bushing already, already prevents your forward movement, but these prevent lateral movement sideways. The rear one, slightly different at the bottom, as you can see, compared to that one. This stops the subframe moving downwards when accelerating and therefore keeps your subframe geometry correct as per the vehicle. Once you've got your car up in the air you will need to make sure that it's supported under the jacking points at each side of an axle stand then under the differential you'll want to be using your trolley jack and these are the bushes which we're going to be putting the inserts into. To get at them on the rearmost ones 21mm socket, centre pin bolt and that'll come loose. On the forward ones you'll need to remove the torsion bar or traction strut depending on what you call it. The plastic 
trim piece and then you'll be able to get at the nut below that as well. To remove the traction strut you might have an original nut or bolt on there. I've replaced mine with an allen cap in stainless so you'll need to remove that nut bolt. Then the same again on the forward point where the traction strut bolts onto where the exhaust mounting is. So once you've done that you will then be able to crack off the nuts and bolts for the subframe bushings and you will be able to lower the subframe around about two inch using the trolley jack. Once you've removed the really long bolts which secures the subframe to the chassis then you'll have easy access to your bush and we're going to start with fitting the rear ones first so remove the two rear bolts and at the front slacken the bolts off so you've got approximately one and a half inch of movement on the subframe which will allow you to lower it so with your jack under the subframe on the differential not on the aluminium case at the rear note where it is it's on the differential body itself which is made out of cast steel and designed to spot the weight of this sort of thing lower the subframe and that will allow the rear to twist down you don't need to remove the exhaust and you don't need to remove a prop shaft to do this So we're only lowering it around about an inch and a half, two inch. If you think you've lowered it too much, just raise it up slightly. And then that will give us clearance to get in to insert the sleeves for the Powerflex bushes. Remember earlier on when I said that you have two different types, one for the front of the subframe, one for the rear, and these are depending on how the subframe twists under acceleration. The top part of each bush is identical, so there's no need to worry about that. So the top bush quite simply slides in, and you can see all the space that it takes up. So if I remove it, you'll be able to see all the rubber space and how far out the metal insert of a bush protrudes and you can see how the Powerflex bush assists here and then that will allow it to mate up to the chassis there the rear bush lower part is slightly larger and that goes up inside the bush as such and when you skewer the subframe back to the car using the bolt the big metal cup washer will pull this bush in and secure it in place so do that for both sides both of the rear sides then we'll go on out to do the front one next if you find that the bush won't push fully home inside its rubber subframe counterpart get a long screwdriver and just push up slightly inside and you'll hear a little pop as it breaks the rubber casting inside it's just tiny little rubber rubber bits of that were left over from the casting process absolutely no reason for it to be there other than part of the way the bush is manufactured so give your screwdriver a good shove up there clear them out and then you'll find that the bush insert will go all the way home without any issues and once you've done that you can then jack up the diff
which will bring the subframe back up towards the car. And then you can insert the long pivot bush pin back into the chassis. Just turn it in a couple of a couple of screw threads because we're going to be lowering the subframe again at the front and we'll want something for the rear of the subframe to grab onto. Do that for each side, then we're ready to move on to the front. Once we remove the long bolts for the subframe bush at the front, then we can lower the subframe down again. And this time it'll grab onto where you've put the bolts back in at the back and allow the front to lower slightly as well. Lower it down just until the prop shaft rests on the exhaust as that is enough clearance to be able to get this job done. Now this is the lower bush for the front of the subframe. Compare it with the one for the rear, you can see the difference straight away. The one for the rear is a lot more meaty and allows the subframe to sit on it because the rear of the subframe will move in a downward direction and the forward one doesn't need all that extra meat on it as the subframe moves upwards and will compress against this bush. If you have bought two sets for the rear there is no reason why you can't use them at all as it is only the lower part that is slightly different but if you bought two sets for the front, then you definitely do need to order the correct part for the rear of it. And again, fitting into the front is the same as fitting in the rear. Give your screwdriver a good poke up inside that bush. Then we'll have a game of innuendo bingo later. Break that rubber, rubber seal inside it from the manufacturing process. And that will allow that to slide up, no problem. Earlier on at the beginning of the video I mentioned the rubber pad on the forward upper part of the subframe. This one is one I did a quick temporary repair on. Give it a coat of insulation tape just so I could get it back on the car. Um, so I could use the car while I waited for other parts to turn up. And as you can see it's pretty badly deformed and you can see where the original bush has pushed through from rubber due to the subframe twisting. So that goes in the bin, don't need it, and this is what replaces it. As you can see, much more substantial, allows the bush to press all around its circumference in an even form, and that will stop your front of your subframe moving up and down and contacting the chassis which causes axle tramp and that's that really horrendous banging noise at the rear of the car when you're setting off a bit sharpish and light the back wheels up. So once the forward bushing is in place this is what it looks like and as you can see it will take up any space between the bushing and the chassis and this will hopefully cure the axle tramp. Once you've refitted the securing bolt on each of the four corners of the subframe, this is what it will look like. So that's the rearmost bush, as you can see the bottom big yellow chunk taking out any movement downwards of the subframe. And then the front one, a bit more difficult to see. That takes out any vertical movement of the subframe at the front to stop the subframe moving upwards. And therefore your subframe will stay perfectly square with the vehicle and you will have zero axle tramp. Normally when you do any suspension work I would say go get your wheel alignment checked after 
as it's prudent to because you've had it in bits and you don't want your vehicle handling incorrectly especially if you're on track days and driving at high speed but because of the nature of the subframe bushings the metal part of a bushing inside the bush itself where it locates onto the chassis it's conical shaped and it can't move in any plane at all so it's a taper fit into the chassis therefore you don't really need to have the chassis geometry checked and your suspension should be as it was when you removed it all obviously if you're replacing all your arms at the same time then definitely have all your suspension checked as it's well worth paying 45 quid to have it done if you can't do it yourself use the method shown in my previous video using two lines or lasers and a caliper and a bit of software off the internet so I hope that this video has been helpful for you and if you want to do this job it shouldn't take you more than an hour if you're a competent mechanic about an hour and a half if you're taking your time and checking everything else while you're under there as well and it's well worth a hundred quid upgrade to make your vehicle drive just that little bit better so subscribe to my other videos like this one if it helped you and I'll be back with more videos and how-to guides in the future. Thank you again.